still be taking any more as they come. So it's town of Andover, special town meeting, uh, Tuesday, February 7th, 7 p.m. We're here at the Andover Elementary School. So the electors and citizens qualified to vote in the town meeting. In the town of Andover, we're hereby notified of the special town meeting to be held here, as we just said, 35 School Road in Andover, Connecticut. On this Tuesday, February 7th, 2023, beginning at 7 p.m. The special town meeting is for the following purposes. The first of which is to choose a moderator for the special town meeting. We have a nomination from the floor. Kathy? Wally Barton. Wally Barton is nominated. I'll second. Seconded by Joy Howell. Any other nominations? I have a motion to close the nomination. No objection? Okay. Vote on the nomination. All in favor? Aye. Aye. By show of hands and voice, we have Wally Barton. Wally? <laughs> Since we have a number of items on the list tonight, if there is no objection, we're going to go through each item, vote on that item, the votes will be picked up, taken out by the registrar's to be counted, and we'll move on to the next item. That way we get through the meeting a little bit quicker, and we won't have the recesses in between each item. Does anyone have an objection to that? Okay, here we go. The other piece of this is I'm going to present the item. I need a motion and a second on the item. And I'll turn the floor over to Eric to do the explanation for the item. So the first item, the Shallow Town will be in over finance and purchase of freight line, 1145D, legacy plow truck, for the Town Department of Public Works, pursuant to a financial agreement with Freightliner of Hartford, whereby the town will pay the vendor $58,888 and 95 cents each year for a period of five years beginning in 2023. Is there a motion? Georgia Conrad. Is there a second? Mary Duvall. Eric? Okay, folks, thank you all for coming out. I'm gonna to try to get through this as fast as I can. I'll answer any questions that you have uh, as soon as I get through. So here's all four things we're voting on tonight. We're gonna to talk right now about the first one. And the first question is why are we asking you to buy a plow truck? So we as a town in 2018 did a pretty exhaustive study about what the cheapest way to supply truck, plow trucks to the town of Andover is. We looked at a bunch of other states and a bunch of other municipalities and we came to like four main conclusions. The first is, if you hold plow trucks longer than their optimal life, it costs us more than if we don't. So, using something for 30 years, when for the last 10, your maintenance costs are for the roof, is just not an economical thing for the town to do. Um, the second thing is that the biggest thing that kills us is rust. The third is that there's a big difference in manufacturers in the total cost of ownership and buying a less expensive vehicle up front in the past has cost us a lot more money overall than spending the money up front to get a better quality vehicle. And then the fourth conclusion is that the body rot accounts for an awful lot of the cost and maintenance of these vehicles. So in uh, 2018, the CIP approved and instituted a 15 year equipment plan for public works, and the goal was right here, to balance the cost, productivity, and reliability of the equipment. Um, and we looked at basically everything that public works had, and one of the things that came out of it was that plow trucks are the single most expensive asset in public works. So here's what we're trying to do to maximize the lifespan and minimize the cost. First is we purchase one truck every fifth year. 
we have three prim primary plow routes, and that means each truck is used for 15 years as a primary plow truck, and then it goes into a reserve or a spare role for another five years. So we're anticipating, you know, the, the most cost-effective way to do it is to use these trucks for about 20 years total. Um, the second thing is, with the last truck we bought, and with this one, we switched from regular mild steel bodies to uh, hard ox slash stainless steel bodies. And we did this because we were getting about 12 years out of the old mild steel bodies. Um, today, if we were to rebody a truck, it would cost us around $45,000 to buy the body, and it's about another $20,000 to do the install, uh, presuming we don't have hydraulics. So if you spend an extra $25,000, to buy a stainless body and you don't have to replace it, overall you save the town quite a bit of money. Um, the second thing is that all of these trucks get fluid film undercoated every year before plow season. Because one of the best things you can do is to prevent corrosion. Um, so they get basically uh, completely washed and fluid coated every year. Um, the second thing is after every storm, every bit of salt gets unloaded from these vehicles and the vehicles get washed. And if we have, it looks like we have a break in storms, we usually power wash them. Um, again, we're doing everything we can to prevent corrosion in the vehicles so we can run them as long as we can. Now, with that, we're still generally planning around year 10 for these vehicles of bringing them in, having the frames and bodies sandblasted and repainted. Again, the idea is to do lower cost items to extend the life of them as much as possible. So this is what we have right now. Uh, you can see we're not quite on plan with maintaining three vehicles uh, less than, than 15 years old. But if we buy this next one, we'll basically be on cycle, other than our emergency spare will be older than we would like. Uh, what we're going to be working Retiring is a plow truck that's already 26 years old. So, if we approve this by town meeting, what we're doing is we're authorizing the purchase of a Freightliner plow truck with a hard ox body plow. Um, we're talking about five year loan payments of $58,970.45, which, if you notice from your sheet, is slightly higher than what we originally allocated. Um, the manufacturer basically will give us a lock for 30 days at a time, and so we had a lock before the meeting, but it expired before we can actually pull the trigger. So, uh, as you know, the feds raised the interest rates again, so that affects the cost of financing a little bit. So this will be the actual number that we will be paying. So to get a built slot, because slots are in such high demand, they're requiring us to put the first year's payment in escrow, which is why we're having this meeting. Uh, by ordering now, we stand a reasonable chance of getting this plow truck by next season, which is when we anticipate uh, putting it into our five-year rotation. So we're paying for this with the Public Works Equipment Fund, and that is a permanent fund that we put money into annually and we fund it basically level funding every year, and we spend out of it as we can. Um, because the plow trucks is basically two and a half years worth of funding in that fund, we can't buy it all at once. So in this case, we're financing this over a five year period. So this is the actual question, and that is the correct dollar amount that we will be uh, paying the vendor. So, what are your questions? Shoot. So, and there's another mic right over there. Um, if this is the question that we approve, let's say that um, when, once we get audited, if we have money left over, is there a possibility that we could pay this off to save the interest? Because the interest is fairly substantial. Sure. Is that an option if we approve the way the question is written? That's my question. So I think if we sign this agreement, 
you know, we're signing this agreement to lease the vehicle. So no, I, I'm not sure we can go back and just outright purchase. But I also don't think we're gonna have enough unexpended funding to do it anyway. So I think it's kind of a good point. Any questions? Microphone's right up there, sir. Can I check where there's a microphone? I don't need one. How many miles do you put on these trucks a year? Uh, we don't put a ton of miles on these trucks, not by any means. I think, uh, I can't tell you off the top of my head, but it's not the miles that kills us, it's the corrosion, right? Uh, I know, and I, I don't know why you don't piggyback off the state and get an international. So, we have one international right now. Um, that international, we have spent about $130,000 in repairs since we've owned that vehicle. That has been a spectacularly unreliable vehicle. And the reason we're not going for internationals is because their cost to repair has been historically very high. I mean, I uh, just can't see it. You got a guy, I don't know if it's Heber or Bolt in Del Bernay. He's had the same Ford truck for 30 years. And he uses that a lot more than this town. But it's not a plow. What's that? I don't think it's a plow. He doesn't garage it. He doesn't wash it like the town does. But is it a plow truck? It's supposed to do a lot doesn't of It doesn't matter. Plow. These guys wash the truck after every storm. There's no need for $60,000 a year. Eric, Eric, ask him if it's a question or not. It's not a question. Right. It's just opinion. Thank you very much. Sure. Understood, sir. Yeah, the truck that you're replacing, the 97 Ford, what size truck is that? I can't hear you. What size is the Ford truck? The truck that you're replacing, what size is that? What What is it? Uh, no, is it an F-250, a 350, a 550? No, no, it's it's bigger. It's a... Uh, 650? I mean, what... It's it's quite a bit bigger than a 650. You don't know what it is? I mean, Ford Louisville is the one that is being replaced. Ford Louisville, you know what size the Louisville is? No. It's a it's the same size the state uses to plow yeah, roads. It's a twenty it's a twenty eight thousand yeah, pounds. It's a standard. What's the GBW that's new truck? It's about the same thing. It's about a twenty eight thousand pound GBW truck that we're trying to get. Uh, just seems like the truck is over three hundred thousand dollars. I don't know why we're gonna pay three hundred thousand dollars for a truck. That's what they owe. We're gonna lease it not own it. No, it's, it's, no, so it's so at least to buy. Yeah, it's a lease to buy, so it's five payments and we own it. We'll own it at five payments. Right. We're not leasing it, giving it back. We we make five payments five years in a row. Lease it to own. Yeah, it's a lease to own. So they all they're doing is basically instead of the town making a payment every month, we make a payment once a year. So five payments, we own it, and then it's ours. So right. Yeah, we're not giving it back at the end of five years. We own that vehicle. Don. Yeah. Don Bentley, Lakeside Drive. What what condition? Is the 97 Ford in right now? It's in pretty good condition. I mean, it's definitely a saleable vehicle. It's pretty underpowered. Um, we did a fair amount of work on it this year. We had some injector issues that we solved. Um, so it's roadworthy as a snowplow vehicle currently? Yeah, it's, it's still functioning. It's still what we run as an emergency spare, sure. And, and what, is, what is the fund balance in the uh, public works capital put in the fund right now? Uh, I think there's roughly 45000 left in that fund. So we're going to take that and we're going to basically use use contingency for the remainder to come up to the, the actual purchase price of the vehicle. And how much money do we yearly put into the public works capital equipment fund? Uh, we've been funding that at around $100,000 a year. I mean, it's up to the Board of Finance what that exact number is, but year in, year out, we've been putting about 100000 so this, this past year, this past budget, we put 100000 into the capital. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Shannon, you were next. Yeah, Eric, I have the same question. So I just wondered, the most recent um, information that I could find on the town's website with regard to the status of any of the funds, so I'm going to have the same question with regard to all four of the questions that are posed for tonight is how much is currently in the funds and how much have we expended in this budget?
budget year. So the most recent that I could find on the website was from October of last year, in which we had $100,000 in the Department of Public Works Equipment Fund, and it said expended year to date was 100,000. So we'd already gone through the full amount that was budgeted by October of last year. Is that accurate? That is accurate. We refund, we put 100,000 in, we added a little back to the fund because we sold several older pieces of equipment. Um, and then this year we basically bought a bobcat uh, or a skid steer for the town. So we added that, that was approved by CIP. That was around 75,000 and what was left after adding money back in for the sale of older equipment plus what was put into the fund um, netted around 45,000. So that's about what's in the account right now? Correct. Thank you. Correct. And we had originally anticipated spending this money in next year's budget and we would have asked you for approval right now for the purchase, but we would not have actually had to write a check until last next year, uh, next budget season. But because the manufacturers have so few build spots, they're basically, they can force us to escrow the money uh, for the first payment, which is what they're doing.
All right, folks, again, I'm going to go through this and then I'll answer any questions to uh, the best of my ability when we're done. So about six months ago, the time the town applied for and was awarded a steep grant. Uh, and the purpose of the steep grant was to replace the old firehouse at 15 Center Street with a new parking structure for uh, senior transportation because one of the issues we ran into with locating a community center where it was, was we didn't really have covered storage for senior transportation. So the way this works is the town agrees to contribute about $75,000 from the multi-use building fund, which will leave that fund with approximately $350,000 in it. And this is not going to affect the funding for the construction of the community slash senior center. That center is funded using the American Rescue Plan Act funds, um, and it is fully funded. So this, this project basically requires asbestos and lead abatement of the existing building, demolition, and then construction of the new structure. This is the existing building uh, right here, and this is the proposed parking garage that we're building. So one of the reasons why we chose the location that we did is because that location has available three-phase power. And as many of you know, the states are pushing municipalities really hard to electrify the fleet. What this allows us is this allows us an area where we have the ability to, to install DC fast chargers because we have three-phase power available. Are we going to build it when we build the buildings? No, but we're going to uh, put in three-phase power to the building so that when we, if we do end up getting an electric bus or something of that nature, we have the ability to charge it right there uh, in its location. That location at 15 Center Street also would serve in the future as the depot for the bus. Because like a lot of institutions, DATCO, who's our bus service provider, is getting pushed very hard for uh, electrifying bus fleets. And the where the buses are stored right now is in the floodplain. And there's no way we're getting building permit permission to put, uh, you know, very expensive electrical devices in the floodplain. So the one of the rationales for using this location is it allows us a future location for uh, rapid charging buses. So that's basically what we're doing. Uh, so the next question is, will you know, will we accept that uh, grant application from the state? or that grant from the state. And happy to answer any questions. Uh, so what is the square footage of this new uh, parking building? Uh, it's basically 36 by 60. Um, and the other thing I didn't mention before is that we're building the top, because we're building this into the bank, we have to we have the ability to have walk-in access from the upper level into the upper area. So this will be built with the floor strong enough that it can take, you know, we can use it for storage, which is something the town desperately needs. So will any of our fire equipment or our fire trucks fit into this, into these larger yeah. bays? Or no. no.
So those are good questions. Uh, part of the reason we did this aesthetically was to try as best as we could to fit into the neighborhood. As you know, Center Street's a pretty eclectic neighborhood. There's no real common design theme. There's some capes, there's some colonials, there's some things that I would describe as kind of a mishmash. Um, so we're trying to make it look appropriate to the neighborhood, even though it is a parking garage. Um, this faces the lower portion of Center Street. So if you looked at the back side of this building, you would see it is a blank wall. There are no gables on the back. And that is done because the back faces pretty well solar south. And that would be a prime location for solar on this building. And the trusses are, are specced on this building so that solar is not a problem to be added. Well, the, this face of the roof right here, the face that you're looking at right now, faces pretty much due north. Yeah. Um, and it's about a six and 10 pitch. So it would not be a candidate for solar anyway because the, the solar gain would be too low. Thank you. Yep. Ricky? <clears throat> I have a question about the first door being so short. Why wouldn't uh, the door be the same all the way across in case you needed to use that for the bus? Well, to be honest, we kind of figured it's unlikely that we're going to need three buses, um, you know, or more than three buses for senior transportation, which is why we decided to save a few bucks and have one, you know, smaller scale door. I mean, we could. We could make them all fall, but that's a pretty big cost adder. This is located in the historic district in Andover? Yes, it is. And is this aesthetically meet that architectural piece of being historic? Historic, will, will the contractors who did this job have to do something to make it look a little bit more historical like the historic district requires? So there is no specific requirement for aesthetics in a historical district other than what we as townspeople set. Mm -hmm. So we do have to jump through the hoops because that building, believe it or not, is on the historic register. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we did, I did walk through it with SHPO, which is the State Historical Preservation Office. Um, so because their first impression anytime you tell them you're taking down a historic building, it's like, no, 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 you can't do that. And then we walk through the building and they're like, yeah, you can take this one down. Um, <laughs> um, there will be some, we're going to try to use a demolition contractor that preserves some of the old chestnut beams because there are some hand hewn chestnut beams and we probably ought to not just throw them in the dumpster. Um, and we are, to make them happy, going to have to do some, basically state law says anytime you take down a historical structure, no matter how trashed it is, you have to do something to mitigate that. So we're probably looking at a, a, some repairs to the Andover Museum, which was the old Andover Town Hall. They're needed anyway because the doors are completely rotten in the building. Uh, so we're going to do a bunch of things we've had on our punch list for a long time anyway to satisfy the State Historical Preservation Office and to get them to officially approve of us demolishing this building. And just to end my question, siding, what type of siding is going on it and lighting. With siding and lighting, it can look somewhat historical. Has that been considered yet or that's part of the bid process? So we did spec a vinyl siding for this building just for low maintenance. Um, you know, obviously if the public really wants some other kind of siding, we can certainly consider it. Um, but given that there's no really coherent theme 
in that area. I really don't want to put wood siding on something that's a garage. Um, but we're not leaving exposed concrete either. I mean, this is designed to be a fairly aesthetic building. You know, and, and obviously these are, you know, they will add a little light to the second floor, but they're mainly just there as decoration, so it looks appropriate in the zone. We looked at a whole bunch of different barn-like structures and compared them to what was in that area before, but there's really no common theme there that we can really match exactly, so we picked this as being a reasonable compromise. Mary? It will not. That's already a five or six year old, actually closer to 10 year old, uh, ductless split AC. Um, given the cost of a new unit, it's not worth trying to recycle something that's already that age. Because what you would have to do is you would have to essentially uninstall it, take the refrigerant out, and that's a refrigerant that's not as common today anyway. So we looked at that, and the cost of doing it just aren't, it'd be nice if we could recycle it, but we really can't. Yeah, it's older, but we really didn't use it that much, but thank you for answering my question. And the second one is quickly, we had our, our memorial bench for Doris Hutchinson, the founder of our Young at Heart Group. Will that be removed? I know that's still there. Yeah, that's been raised by a couple of the senior groups. We absolutely intend to preserve that bench. Um, I don't know where it's appropriate to put it, and, and I'm happy to, to take suggestions on where the best location of that is going forward. Um, you know, whether you want it at the new community center or whether you have another area you have picked out for it, but we're, we're definitely not growing that one away. That is accurate. There's roughly. Uh, was that the 500,000 that initially was a fund gathered for the community center? There was. A, there, it was. So the town put money away starting five or six years ago to build the community center, and we had been building that slowly. Um, we got basically a big infusion of cash from the ARPA funds, and the ARPA funds were enough to fund the complete construction cost of the building. So the Board of Selectmen, uh, you know, decided to spend the ARPA funds on that. And that gets us up to the million dollar threshold we don't want to exceed anyway, because it bumps us up into paying uh, prevailing wage. So we're trying, you know, we, we basically are keeping the cost under a million anyway, so we're fully funded. So yes, that money was originally put aside as a multi-use building fund, but it was understood that the project we were putting it away for was the community center. So we know we can fund the community center out of existing money, so the, the one thing we couldn't fund, at least that at that point, was a decent home for senior transportation. So we're gonna take part of the money to do that, and then the remainder of the money, some of that, 
likely be spent in the future outfitting the community center, but by doing it separately and not part of the build of the community center, you know, we can, you know, if we wait six months, we can spend that money, or some of that money on outfitting the community center and not having to have to worry about playing prevailing wage on the whole job. So that's essentially what we're trying to do. But my initial question was, where does the fund appear in the budget? Because again, I'm looking at documents from last October and I don't see either a function or an indication of the multi-use building fund. Right, we did not fund the multi-use building fund. We put nothing in the fund last year because by last year we knew we had ARPA funds, so we didn't fund it last year. But These, if I, it if it I would show up in the yep. budget, yep. In, the, in the bottom of the budget, in the transfers section. If I wanted to, which I do, obviously, how do I find out how much are in all the, there are about six or eight different funds referred to in the four different questions here. How does a, a citizen find out how much is in each of these funds? The if it's not in the budget, where do you find out the, about that? The town audit every year will show up. But we haven't done the audit until most recently, so is that correct? So you go to last year's audit? I did. And you're saying it's not in last year's audit? What I'm saying is, is the audit was just completed, is that correct? Yes. But okay, you so can go prior to, to the audit, if I wanted to know, do I have to, to wait the for the audit to come out about six or 10 months after the budget year to find out? No, every, you could go to last year's to find out what was there, and then you would add, in this case, there wasn't any added in, in the standing budget, so you yeah. would have no additions. And then for spending, normally we'd have a monthly a monthly outlay. Obviously, you know that the, the town has had some issues with staff turnover in that office, so you know they're actually working on transitioning to a new software system. So they're a little behind on those budgets, but they are uh, those monthly budgets, but once those get caught up, then we'll have something to well, I'm just saying that a word that I now hate, which is transparency, um, I did in fact prepare for this meeting and I tried to look at budgets and funds and whatnot. Um, it's very difficult to find out. Sure. We're being asked to move to funds. What's in the funds? Sure. That's tomorrow, a comment. Tomorrow we'll get to the audit from the prior year and then we'll get to the Oh, it's on the website. It's on the website. It's there. The audit's now on the website. It is in there. Yep, I, didn't, I found that, Jeff. Thank you. You're welcome. So you did find the information, but you're looking for no, the monthly transfers? Pardon? You're looking for a monthly transfer or something out of that? Or? I'm just looking for a monthly accounting because the most recent accounting on the town's website is October of last year with regard to the budget. So I don't know if the Board of Finance, I looked in the Board of Finance's agenda, minutes, and the packet that they received. And the most recent packet that was on the website is from last October. Okay, thank you. How is the building needed? Say that again? How is the building needed? It's not. Okay. No reason to hate a parking garage. Okay. Well, eventually, the solar panels will transfer to something for heating and sun? It's not for heating. I mean, the solar panels will go on when we put the car chargers on, when we have a lot of usage in the building. That's the intention. We're not here to discuss the design of the building or anything else. We're only here to vote on whether or not to accept the grant. So I call the question. Thank you. Question has been called. Is there a second? Yes. There is a second. The debate is ended. Again, when you came through the door, your packet of ballots. This would be official ballot number two. And while I have your attention, the first item on purchasing of the freight line, the vote was 47 yes, 13 no. That item is passed. So again, if you fill out your question for your ballot number two and hand it in, we'll move on.
have to pack out every bus. Have all the guns been Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 
So basically, there's a number of possible ways this connection can be made. We're not trying to pick one at this point. Yeah. We're I saying we need to figure out what the best way to do. We know what the problem is, but we're asking for money to figure out what the solution is. Other questions? Uh, where is the school? Is it adjacent to that town-owned piece that you have in a slightly different color? This is the school right here. Okay. And this is the town hall right behind it. This is school road right along there. So, down the middle of the right side, trying to go from where to where? Can you just take your picture? From the train. Show me. So, the goal is to figure out how to develop a path to right here, which is the municipal complex, right? Um, and the advantage of here is that that puts you on School Road, which has a direct connection to Lake Road, which is the highest density district. And then get people from here without going on Route 316, which has no shoulders and some pretty appalling sight lines, which we've asked the DOT to correct multiple times, and they've told us to pound sand, and get them down to the rail trail. And the reason we're doing that is the rail trail is basically the non-motorized east-west connection through the town. It's safe, it's walkable, bikeable, horses, you name it. Um, but the question is, people either have to drive to get to it, or they need some safe way to walk to it or bike to it. And this is part of our efforts. Um, and by the way, this was originally proposed in the Plan of Conservation and Development 2015, and it's also part of the Complete Streets Master Plan that the town has for making the town more bikeable and walkable. So how long of a path is this? Is it a mile? Is it two miles? It's less than a mile, and it depends on how we do it, basically. So there's different options, but all the options are going to be less than a mile. So that is one option. Like that's why we drew this. We sub sorry. We submitted a map for such a big study area because we're not trying to tell them that uh, they have to go down 316. We're putting 316 in the area so that they'll study that. But we're also saying right up front, the town owns all of this land back here. Uh, the, the problem the town has is when you get up to where the trail is there, there's some extremely steep grades there. Um, and that's really hard to overcome without some really extensive switchbacking. Um, and it's still not something that's, uh, going up 316 is a lot more gradual and following along Cider Mill Road is even way more gradual than that. So if you want something that people are going to actually use, now, as an avid cyclist, do I care? No. I mean, I'd go up 316, but a lot of people won't. So our goal is to come up with the easiest route possible so it's used a lot. No sense having a path if people don't take it. Sir? Can you speak up? I, I actually can't hear you. I said you've already got an existing laneway that goes from the back corner of the school lot from down here to the Mara Valley and Lake Road. There's a laneway that goes right through here. It might be a little overgrown. It's been there forever. Well, that laneway... Right, but that laneway is the gas line. Um, and I don't... Okay. There's another one. Okay, I understand what you're talking about now. That is private property that we don't own that. So, um, and since somebody's actively developing that as a farm, I don't think they're going to be too excited about us running a pathway through the middle of it. 
But if you know, sorry. If you notice, we expanded this definition way past uh, the boundaries of town property because we wanted to take in every possibility, including potentially going down School Road, you know, cutting across the dam without Poa's permission and going in that way too. I mean, we're, we're open to any consideration within that range. We just, we know what we're trying to do. We're not telling, you know, saying at this point how we want to do it. <coughs> Is there a second? A question for the call from seconded. Again, when you came to the door, this would be ballot, official ballot number three. You can fill that out, register us, and pick up those. And while you're doing that, I'll give you the results of the steep grant vote. It was 61 yes. Eight no and one blank. So that item also passed. 61. Eight. No, the first one there, you gave it to Tom. Yeah. It was like. I don't have an exact figure for you. 
Um, we've talked to our in-house engineering firm, as, and I bounced it off one of the other transportation engineers that I'm uh, friends with, so I'm pretty sure that our total design costs are going to be somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, so what is this going to allow us to do? So just to orient you, uh, this is Henry Road right here. This is Long Hill. So this is stuff that's taking place in the northern half of the town. And roughly three years from now, the bridge at Long Hill is going to get replaced. So for about a year, there's going to be no driving up Long Hill. That means every bit of traffic to this whole section, the whole northern section of the town, is going to be coming up Henry. Now, the first part of Henry is already in pretty good shape, so what we're proposing to do is first address the drainage with Public Works this summer, and then starting as soon as we have grant funding, repave, or first reclaim, and then repave the section uh, all the way up to Wheeling Road. So that at the point where we're forced to just use this, we have a road that's more capable of handling the traffic. As a lot of you know, we drove it up until last year, it was in really bad shape. We did shim and chip seal it as a temporary measure, but the underlying road structure is pretty bad. Uh, so that's in a nutshell what we're trying to do. We looked at projects in a couple different parts of town, but we picked one we thought that was most likely to be funded. So that's basically what we're doing and why we're going after that. Uh, and that is the question. Are you saying later that Long Hill will be Can you speak up after the bridge? You gotta speak up, I'm a little deaf. Will, will you say, are we planning to do, redo Long Hill after we do the bridge? Uh, well, we just spent a half a million dollars reclaiming and repaving the first section of Long Hill, so we're not doing anything more to that section. How about the chip seal part? So, I would like to, but the reality is reclaiming and repaving a road right now is somewhere in the order of a half million dollars per mile. Um, and we've got 34 miles of roadway in the town of Andover. So unless you all want to pass a 17 or 18 million dollar bond package, we're not going to do a lot of reclaiming and repaving unless we can get grant money to do it. The way we were able to do that section of Long Hill and also Shot Mill is because we had a previous steep grant that we uh, sought and were awarded that offset part of the cost of doing that. Yeah, road work today is just kind of crazy expensive. I think that this applies only to that register you have on the map. Yep. Um, that's the sole extent we're going to be able to do out of this grant funding. It'd be nice if we could do a lot more. I agree, but we can't. How, how, long, yeah, how long the stretch is that? Uh, the portion that we're so all, all of Hendy going to be redone? Uh, not all of Hendy. The very first part of Hendy, basically up to Pine Ridge, is not going to be redone because that portion of the road was uh, redone much sooner and it doesn't have a pavement condition index low enough for us to be able to apply to, to redo that section of the road. So what is the distance of the road that's going to be replanted? Uh, around 1.6 miles. And do you really think that Long Hill is going to shut down the entire year? Or close to that? Uh, I think that engineers being optimists tell us that it's should not take more than nine months, um, but they also told me it should only take two years to uh, get to do Bunker Hill, and the state is still arguing with the design contractor over that one. So yeah, I, I think planning on that bridge being out of commission for a year is realistic. And 
I don't want it any longer because that's my commute every day too. That's the last thing I want. Rich?